Good morning, everyone. So, mea culpa, I have the wrong readings listed in the song sheet. So listen attentively. Um, I, I kind of got the hint last night when people were like, you know, looking through their program for the right reading. <laughs> um, and then the first communion song where it says, Cantor first time, just ignore that. Just go ahead and sing along with me. Nancy, you're up. Oops, she's running away. Ah, yes, yes, we need our, in my case, you know, trifocals, my second, third, and fourth pair of eyes, so... Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. My name is Nancy Poole, and we're happy that you are celebrating this Holy Day of Obligation with us. Today's Mass is being streamed live. We are united today both in person and with our online family. We ask all those present with us to kindly silence your cell phones. Under guidance from the Diocese of Richmond and the Virginia Department of Health, we recommend that vaccinated individuals wear masks while attending mask. We continue to require masks for unvaccinated individuals when inside parish buildings. It's not too late to donate sneakers for the Eastern Shore migrant workers. Donations are accepted until today at 1.30 p.m. Place them in the carts in the commons. Thank you. You're welcome to join the social ministers in, to the Eastern Shore today, providing your own transportation. They will leave at 4.15 from the social ministry parking lot in the back of the church. We have one week left to select a tag off the apple tree for our school supply donation drives. Place donations in the shopping carts and gift cards or monetary donations can be placed in the wooden box. All donations are due by next Sunday, August 22nd. Thank you. The capital campaign, Growing Into Our Future, continues. We would love to hit our goal before Father Daniel returns from Tanzania. If you have questions or concerns, please contact the business office. And now, a word about the upcoming Children's Faith Formation Program. Good morning. How are you all? My name is Kim Kennedy, and I am the coordinator of Children's Faith Formation here at Ascension. Uh, it's time for our new school year of faith formation. Registration is now open for all levels. Uh, letters with information went out to everyone who has registered with us for the past two years. But I'm here today, today to share with you just briefly about our upcoming programs and invite you to think about registering for your children and becoming a volunteer. Our family faith formation is for our families with preschool and elementary age children. This exciting program brings, brings families together for prayer and encountering Jesus, and we have four different options this year for you to choose from. For families with middle schoolers, we're making some exciting changes to the program and have set a new time of 6.45 to 8 p.m., so just an extra few minutes, 15 minutes. For all of our high school youth, they're invited to participate in YOA, which stands for Youth of Ascension, they meet on Sunday evenings, and all classes will begin in mid to late September. Registration for the fall formation programs are online this year using QR codes. They were included in your mailing, um, and there's also a full information page in the bulletin and on our website that you're welcome to check out. Um, I know there are many of you here today who have volunteered with Faith Formation Ministries in the past. You might have been a part of religious education, our vacation Bible school, discovering Christ, RCA Landings, been a sponsor maybe. I invite you to please stand if you have volunteered with us in the past. Yeah. Thank you all for your gift of service. Um, and in front of any of you who are considering about volunteering this year, you can speak to one of those folks, um, or I will also be in the back. Um, and just invite you to come think about volunteering. We need approximately volunteers 
50 volunteers from our preschool to high school programs. Um, so there's opportunities to help on Tuesday evenings, Wednesday afternoons, or Sunday mornings. So, and we are accepting both youth and adult volunteers. So just please consider sharing your gift of faith with the youth of our parish. Um, and then you can also grow in your faith as well. So I will be, as I mentioned, I'll be in the Commons after Mass to answer any questions you have, to help you register for volunteering, or to register for a program. Thank you so much. Would you please rise? God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near. God's time is near. God's time is near. God's time is near. God has chosen me. God has chosen me to set a light a new fire. God has chosen me. God has chosen me to bring to birth a new kingdom on earth. God has chosen me. Chosen me. And to tell the world that God's kingdom is near To remove oppression and break down fear Yes, God's time is near God's time is near God's time is near God's time is near In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit Amen The grace, mercy, and peace of God our loving Father Be with each of you here now With your spirit my dear friends, um, we have a little glitch. There, there's no deacon here this morning, so I'll have to learn how to do it all myself. <laughs> Today we celebrate the glory of Mary, the mother of Jesus, triumphant herself. She did not sin. She did not experience the effects of sin, namely death. She is assumed body and soul into heaven. And so we pray to her in reverence of her, her position, but also the promise fulfilled in her that we all hold from our own baptism. But we acknowledge our failures. Lord Jesus, you have won victory over sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And, Lord Jesus, you have triumphed over death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you rose from the dead and live forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life without end. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the high Glory, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory, glory to God in the highest, glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of 
the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people the good For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. the glory of God the Father. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, holy in body and soul into heavenly glory. Grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. And we ask this through Jesus, her Son, your Son, our Lord and brother, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have salvation and power come and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The Queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The Queen takes her place at your right hand, in gold of Ophir. The Queen stands at your right hand, Arrayed in gold. 
Hear, O daughter, and see. Turn your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. They are born in with gladness and joy, they entered the palace of the king. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life but each one in proper order. Christ, the firstfruits. Then, at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet, the last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. My sisters, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. This reading continues the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth, her cousin. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant in her womb leaped, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does it happen to me that the mother of my God should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my cares, ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, and he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and he has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his children forever. Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her own home. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated uh, for a moment. We'll rise again for the creed in just a second, but for the moment, I am confused because while I've been saying Mass daily, uh, the deacon who isn't here, the little man who wasn't here, uh, announces the Mass intentions before Mass starts. And I didn't hear that. Well, it's a null, anyhow, because with the Holy Day, Father declared that the intentions would be at the choice of the priest. So I have to tell you that I intend to say this Mass for my deceased mother and father and brother and sister, uh, James and James, Margaret Bernadette, and Mary Margaret. All right, so that's, that's done. Um, After the homily, we'll, the deacon usually leads the creed. Uh, I will do that too. <laughs> but let's consider the Feast of the Assumption. But I borrow a text to begin with that is from another little part of the very same Gospel of Luke, where a woman in the crowd around Jesus cries out, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that nursed you. If we had been there, part of that crowd, listening to Jesus speak, the men here might have shown some annoyance at the woman's display of feeling. And somewhat surprised to hear her expressing her high regard for Jesus by blessing his mother. But the women here, I think, maybe some men, might have said amen to this hymn of praise that the woman utters. And then what we they would have thought to hear Jesus answer, oh, but rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Luke is the only evangelist to record those words. And that's why I use it as an opener here. Luke is likewise the only one to give us Elizabeth's words to Mary when Mary came to visit her that you heard in the gospel this morning. And I repeat those words for you. Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And then Elizabeth has, blessed is she who believed that the words of the Lord to her would be fulfilled. So you see, Mary is from the beginning the hearer of the word par excellence. And that caused years later, centuries later, St. Augustine to say she conceived Jesus in her heart before she ever conceived him in her womb. 
She believed before she conceived. Mary is therefore the very first among the blessed who hear the word of God and keep it. No wonder then that she is the first among the blessed to experience the very depth of her own being the fulfillment of those words. And the words that Jesus expressed later on in the Gospel of John expressed to his Father on behalf of his assembled apostles at the very end of his human life. Jesus said to them, I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see the glory, they may receive the glory that you have given me because you love me. Father, before the foundation of the world. <coughs> Mary, the mother of Christ, the mother of us all then, falls into the sleep of death. This feast is very ancient as a feast in the Eastern Church. And it has the name of the Dormition of the Blessed Mother, the sleeping away of the Blessed Mother, to be with her son forever. That's the classic moment of the Assumption that we celebrate today. And the proclamation that the church makes to hold this dogma above us all as necessary fact of faith, our faith, very guarded assumption that the church pronounces. It doesn't go extravagantly into details. It doesn't say Mary died. It says, when her days on earth were ended, Mary was taken, body and soul, which is the human collective way to say, as she knows herself, you could say it yourself, like body and soul, to be with her Savior. That's what we believe. But that's only the beginning. There is a little bit of fine print in our belief. And so we can say, wherever in the church, including all along here, whenever there is a gleam of true glory, a faithful act of worship, discipleship, a prayer offered in faith, a hand stretched out in love, there is assumption. Human life is being lifted up. I hope it's being lifted up for me right now because I'm trying to offer you the truth. Human life is being offered to God by God. Believe that. We believe it is true in the church expectant. You are the church expectant. Souls are being perfected towards the day of Jesus Christ. Because finally in the church triumphant, when you and I die, Praise God, the work will be complete and be completed with Mary and all the saints, including your deceased mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters. The people of God will have attained to his eternal kingdom of glory, peace, and life. That's why we celebrate today's Feast of Assumption. We celebrate the body of Mary of Nazareth, who at the end of her life was taken body and soul into heaven. 
The second reading that you heard reminds us that death is the result of sin and corruption. But that was not part of God's original plan for creation. However, since the fall of our first parents, described in the book of Genesis, we are all prone to the possibility of sin because, as you well know, selfishness is deeply rooted in our human nature. From infancy, wow, take care of me, I'm important. But that was not the case with the mother of Jesus. She was conceived, we say, in immaculate nature. And throughout her years, she lived in the unselfishness of pure love. She knew no sin. Accordingly, at the end of her life, she did not experience death in the same way that we do. Her body did not corrupt. Rather, she went straight to God. As I told you, in the early church, this feast was called the Dormition of Mary. That is, falling asleep in the Lord. against whom she had not sinned. We live in an age, I think you will all admit this, where the body is seen very often as simply functional. It is used for pleasure. It is used for experimentation. It is abused. And then it is often, not always, but often disposed of without respect. Mass graves, people are dumped into them. Today's feast reminds us of the importance of our own bodies. They are dwelling places of the Holy Spirit. We are all created in the image and the likeness of our God. It is a very basic Christian teaching that we should respect this great gift of God. Care for it, nourish it, honor it. It does not mean that we should be overindulgent about it or make it a cult of something. Rather, we remember that as with any gift, we should be grateful and we should celebrate what we have received. One day after our death, we will be, all of us, reunited with our bodies. We do not know how that happens or understand how it comes about. However, we do know from our first reading today that Jesus has won a victory over sin and death and that that victory will be ours also. For James and James and Mary, uh, Margaret Bernadette and Mary Margaret, Today we give thanks to God for the assumption of Our Lady who is now with God. That as, not as a disembodied spirit, but as she knew herself, nor is she ever simply a pious thought. She lives as a woman. She is the woman who gave life to Jesus and who encourages us to celebrate our lives, our bodies, and our world.
And it's fitting at the end. That's the word in Latin that the church uses about this event of assumption. They chet. It is fitting. That she is in this position. It is fitting that she can pray for us and intercede for us. And that's why we venerate us, her. And so at the end, I would say about her now, Mary, mother, pray for us. Now and always. Amen. Well, Reverend Deacon, you will lead us in the creed. came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scripture. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken to the prophet. I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God gives us all life. In Mary, he shows us what can be achieved in that life through our operation, our cooperation with his will and acceptance of his grace. Let us now ask for our needs and especially the needs of his world. For the church, that she, like the Virgin Mary, may bring Christ into the world with joy and be joined with him in endless life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> For all mothers, that they find in Mary the example and strength to carry out their vocation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the lowly, the hungry, and the depressed, that the Almighty will do great things in their lives and in the lives of all who are deprived of human dignity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and suffering in any way, that they may find strength, consolation, and healing by turning to the Blessed Mother, who intercedes for us from her place in heaven, especially Connie Cannon, Sue Hopple, those who've been affected by COVID, those chronically ill listed in our bulletin, and those names we mention aloud. Amen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, we ask that they may be welcomed into your eternal kingdom, especially Willie Stamper, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father in Mary, we see the fullness of your promises fulfilled now in our human nature. Help us build a world which has respect for one another as our predominant value of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Lord, by this mingling of wine and water, may we be enabled to share his divinity, who humbled himself to share our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. It is through your goodness that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, will be for us the bread of life. And blessed are you through this cup we've offered. It will be the wine of life. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away our sins, cleanse us from our sinfulness. Amen. Pray, my brothers, my sisters, that our sacrifice find favor before God, who is, for each of us, a loving Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assume into heaven, may our hearts attain in fire, the fire of love for you, constantly long for you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, always through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven at the, as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection itself as a sign of sure hope and comfort for your pilgrim people. Rightly you, would, rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously, marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you now with joy in proclaiming holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. On the day before he was to suffer, on that night of that last supper, we acclaim that he, you are truly holy and to be glorified. O God, who loved the human race, that you walk with us always on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present now in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus. For on the day he was to suffer, on the night of that last supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. By your cross and resurrection, you have set us. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ, your Son, our brother, and our Savior, whom you led through a passion and a death on a cross to the glory of the resurrection. And when you have seated at your right hand our Savior, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on this oblation of your church, because in it we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, and the order of bishops and priests and deacons and your religious and your committed witnesses, however they image the kingdom being unfolded in our presence. Grant that the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times in the light of their faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of each other, that sharing each other's grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them together the good news of salvation and go forward together with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died, who have a claim upon our memory, and our intentions as a body about our dead. Those who have fallen asleep in your love. All the dead whose faith you alone may have known. Admit them all and to rejoice in the light of your presence. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly dwelling is completed that we may come to an eternal dwelling and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with all of your saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. joyfully 
say those words he gave us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your kindness, keep us free from sin. Protect us from every needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O oh Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not upon our sinfulness, but upon our faithfulness, and grant each one of us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with each of you now. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. This is he who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy. May the body and blood of Christ preserve our souls to life, life without end. While the deacon is communicating the ones who assist us, let us pray for spiritual communion for those who are watching online. My Jesus, we believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to receive you into our souls. Some of us cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, but some of us all of us can receive you spiritually in our hearts. We embrace you and unite ourselves completely to you in reception, in spiritual and physically. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen.
and his mercy will reach from age to age and hold me, hold me, hold me is his name.
All generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you, Lord, to grant that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection also, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. If this is your first time back to Mass since the COVID virus descended on humanity, please raise your hand. Do we have any? In the back. Madam, welcome. You were missed at the table of the Lord. And if you are a newcomer or a visitor, we would like to welcome you. And the way we do that at Ascension is to ask you to stand, tell us your name and where you're from. Do we have any visitors or newcomers? Aha, a brave soul. <laughs> yes, ma'am. From Welcome. Nobody else? Well, then, in that case, please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May God the Father, the author of all life, fill you with his love. May Jesus, Son of Mary, give you victory over sin and selfishness. May the spirit of a living God continue to empower you. And may Almighty God now bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Yeah.